Hello, I'm Beryl Dakers. Welcome to Palmetto Scene. In this episode, we feature artists who use the walls of the city to convey a message of unity. In this first segment, we'll visit rising artist Aisha Charles. Aisha has been painting life not only onto her canvases, but onto the walls throughout the Midlands. ETV's Desiree Cheeks had an opportunity to speak with her and to get more insight into her artistry. My name is Aisha Charles and I'm here from Columbia, South Carolina. I was a military kid and I'm also part Louisiana, so I always call myself a Nola Cola. But since I graduated from South Carolina, this is my hometown. This is where I come from. From a young age, local artist Aisha Charles has been creating art from any resource she could find. No canvas too big or too small. As a self-taught painter and now a well-known up-and-coming entrepreneur in the art world, this talented artist is transforming spaces around the state to bring a new beauty and perspective to our daily lives. Art has always been a part of me. It was like self-therapy for me when I was growing up. Once I got into middle school and high school, I saw how it also affected others that view my work. So it became more of bringing positive lights into dark rooms instead of just me creating for myself. Did you ever have like a, a this is it, like a aha moment where you know like this is what I want to be doing, like I want to paint? Was that after you'd already been, you know, doing any and everything, just trying to get your name out there? Like when did it hit like I can really make myself something out of this? My senior year of high school. Prior to being introduced to paint, I actually did not have access to it. <laughs> I was a make it happen girl. So when I would want to paint, I'd go in the woods, pick berries, crumble up leaves. Anything that I could get colors from, I would just make it. And my teacher, Mr. Hicks, told me, I, said, I can't teach you anything, so whatever you want, let me know. And I told him that I wanted to be introduced to paint. They gave me the opportunity to actually purchase supplies that I never had previously. And I just fell in love with all the colors and I never stopped ever since. What inspires me as an artist is just the emotion that it brings to people when they view my work. I feel like artwork should have a soul instead of it just being pretty. And when I have a story to follow behind it, people can take that with them even if they can't take the art with them as well. Where I find myself being in my element the most is when I'm outdoors. My parents used to always take us outside to the riverfront or just public parks and areas just so we could relax and just get our minds clear and just enjoy the beautiful weather. So I love to paint outside and just enjoy the breeze, listening to the water. While I create, it's just meditation for me. The story I'm working on is between my dad and my little brother. Their bond was built from baseball and honestly it was something that held all of the family together. So I just wanted to showcase the very start of when baseball really just affected our family because my little brother actually ended up going into professional, well, baseball as he got older. And it's just always been a part of us going to games. And I just wanted to just showcase that happiness of my dad <laughs> when they first went, went onto the field together. As you'll see in my gallery as well, a lot of those pieces actually were created out here. I do a lot of client work, but when I'm out here, it's mainly pieces that came straight from my mind, which you'll definitely see there. So Aja, I see you got a lot of different techniques going on in your uh, artwork here. What would you say is your most used uh, technique? I'm very hands-on, so I'll say that finger painting is definitely something that I use in my pieces. I know brushes are traditional, but I just like to immerse myself into my work, touch it, and just knowing where I want the paint to lay with my fingers. I do that all day. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. And I definitely see that happening in this painting right here, I, which I absolutely love. I would love for you to tell me a little bit more about this one. So this is song, my sunflower girl. Her name is I Don't Know You. I just wanted her to invoke the fact that she doesn't live by stereotypes. She might be pretty from the outside, but she's looking at you like, are you going to really get to know me for who I am instead of what I look like? And that's why I wanted her to really look down at you and just ask you that question. And I definitely feel that her eye contact got me coming down the hallway. It stopped me dead in my tracks. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Thank you. I don't like to limit myself as far as creating. And I always say the bigger the mural, the better for me, because that gives me a chance to just put my imagination out onto larger scale canvases.
When I got the opportunity via West Columbia to do their interactive park for Columbia, South Carolina, I decided I'm not gonna stop doing murals. It not only brought the chance for me to put my artwork on a large building, but also let the community speak through it. I got to showcase why it's fun to live in Casey. I was able to really just enjoy listening to the residents' stories of their experiences growing up there and to paint on a two-story building is definitely something that was up my alley and I love driving past it every day. Did you ever imagine it would be on a scale as big as this where you know your, your schedule is booked and, and you're running around town trying to make appointments for interviews? Did you ever dream it this big? I knew it would happen, but I'll say this. My dad calls me Forrest Gump. <laughs> Because you remember that scene where he just got up and just started running because yeah. he couldn't run anymore? That's pretty much me. I just love the fact that people love what I do because I would do it regardless. Because my number one thing is it's called Aisha Art. Because without art, there'd be no Aisha. Just like there would be no art without me. If you don't invest in yourself, no one will. You have to live your best life. Do what makes you happy. Even if it's scary, it's worth the risk. I'm living in risk and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I know that my artwork can spark many emotions in people, but I know that a lot of people don't smile. And if I can do that, I've done my job. And now a look at a mural project that speaks purpose to us all. Under the train trestle on Rosewood Drive here in Columbia, there's a mural that is turning a lot of heads these days. Realty Haven wanted their new location to be a beacon of light during troubled times. And in spite of opposition, they pressed forward with a statement of unity. I had a nightmare when I was a little kid and my mom knew that I liked to draw a lot, so she asked me to draw what was in my nightmare. She uh, had me bring it to the fireplace and lit the fire and I, I threw it in there and I never had that nightmare again. So ever since then, I guess it just stuck in my head and I just, I'm obsessed with it. Realty Haven is actually a real estate brokerage firm. We originally started as a operations company for large scale investors. So we would help them acquire single family homes and turn them into rental properties. As of lately, we have just pivoted our model to go towards starting a nonprofit, which is Haven Home, that we can also buy single family homes and turn them into rentals, but we want to offer them at affordable levels because of the inflation that we've seen in the market. So the mural on the outside of the building ties into everything that we do here. It was really intended to be a light in kind of dark times, and we wanted to be able to show our love for all of the people that make up our communities and love for people that have made impacts on our individual lives as well. Right now I'm working on my grandfather. They retired him as a Brigadier General. He's actually the son of Emily Douglas, who they named the park after and he became the postmaster of Columbia, retired as Grand Billy, loved and adored by the entire community. I haven't seen any representations of uh, South Carolina, or many of the South for that matter, uh, that ring true to, uh, to the way I see it. People don't realize how culturally diverse it is down here. You know, when I go up north and I go to uh, different cities, unless you're in a large city, it's predominantly white. I miss black people and Latino culture, and you know, I miss um, all this stuff when I'm, when I'm on the road. I really love the idea of portraits. Um, we had gone down to Wynwood Walls and kind of fell in love with that in Miami, uh, the art scene down there and McClellan's art that we had seen samples of was really something that I connected with. What I decided to do was make the mural um, match the sunset and the sunrise. I bring in the crew. We uh, strip the walls down, prime it, and you know, then we start with the mural work. We decided to put the black people up first. Right now, it's so charged and they seem to be needing uh, representation. McClellan had been talking to me about what he wanted to do. And he was uh, saying that he thought this was a big thing for the city, but also too for the area, uh, Rosewood area. And I thought to myself, he's right about that. I do believe this piece turns a lot of heads. Uh, McClellan chose to use some really bright colors, catches people's eyes. He's also 
chose to use different individuals. Um, he used me to start the whole thing off. I mean, hey, and I'm wearing a black hat. I'm looking like a superhero on the side of a wall, but also too, everybody else who's on the wall looks like a superhero. I had a feeling, you know, it might trigger somebody and I, and I had a bunch of people drive by and they thought it was uh, George Floyd. I mean, it's sad, but I mean, just putting a black person on a wall has become so charged that uh, somebody decided to deface it and put something really terrible on it. Um, honestly, it didn't surprise me. Black Lives Matter! The time in which the mural first began, it definitely was in the heat of the moment where everything was taking place around the country and actually around the world. And um, though the Rosewood area is definitely an area that's progressive, um, I just still expected it to happen because uh, the tensions are very high right now. You do your best to navigate it, and in some cases, you have to face it head on. You find ways to help you and assist you in dealing with these things, and it's definitely not an easy issue to deal with. And it's definitely not an issue that's going to be going away any, anytime soon. I've had a couple of people drive by and, you know, yell, make America great again and stuff like that. Whatever your political views, it's, it, you know, it's, it's weird to me that, that this, something that's meant to be inclusive, um, can be seen by some people to be uh, uh, such a divisive act. That pretty much set everything in motion for all the attention that the work needed. So they unknowingly did something positive for this project. <laughs> Feels great, it's satisfying to say the least. We've had a lot of really great out love and support from everybody that's here. Um, people coming by, taking photos uh, with the artwork, leaving us wonderful messages on social media. This was a lot more important than even I had um, you know, originally thought and uh, so we decided to make sure that everybody's represented. And I thought acknowledging the Native Americans, especially in their home state, would be very impactful. And the Catawba tribe is the only recognized tribe in the state of South Carolina. And John George was their last living medicine man who just passed away this year. And so we wanted to get that as a tribute to them. It's basically been a mishmash of what looks good and also adds to the diversity of the mural. So every time we drive past the building, it's a reminder of how blessed we are and how far we've come from Luna's condition. Two days after her second birthday, she had an arteriovenous malformation that ruptured. Uh, essentially, she just had a stroke and lost the use of her right side. And we were in the hospital for 11 weeks. She went through three brain surgeries, and she's just such a miracle. Now she's about two and a half, and she's already regained the use of her right side. She's walking, she's moving her arm, she's talking again. Every time we drive by, she says, it's me, Luna. And it's just the cutest thing ever. I hope in the future she can bring her kids to see it one day. Seeing my mom's picture on the side of the building was humbling, to say the least. And if you knew the background of my mother and, and all that she's gone through to be who she is today, you wouldn't be surprised that she's on the building as well. Where do we even begin? Um, so somebody who lost her parents when she was nine and then came here because of the Korean War and all the pain that she's gone through and some of the experiences that she's gone through and losing family to the North Korean side. And if you met her today, you'd realize, you know, that's a really strong woman inside of a tiny, humble, meek shell. Yet the strong woman is representing a lot of people inside of the building. I mean, there's a pretty large ethnic community here. And so I think representation certainly does help and help acknowledge that they, they're here and they're making an impact in the community as well. I mean, people just stop by every day and they, you know, they tell me, you know, we, we thank you so much, but I'm just like, you know, I'm just trying to make something pretty for everybody, you know, but I, I didn't expect it to be such an event. I mean, I think it's something that we needed. You know, people are having a really hard time. If I can do something to brighten up their day, it's, it's you know, special. 
As we continue our theme of art, we'll travel down to a small South Carolina town that has one of the state's biggest arts festivals. I'm talking about Arts Field 2021. This popular event returns to Lake City April 23rd through May 1st. The goal? Honoring artists of the Southeast with a week's worth of celebration and competition. Tonight we'll take a look back at a previous festival for just a hint of what's to come. Art Fields is a southeastern competition that calls out to artists in 12 southeastern states. When we started Art Fields, we started with pretty much two goals in mind. One goal was to provide a platform for artists in the Southeast that we pretty much, you know, didn't have anywhere else. And the second goal was to revitalize Lake City and downtown. And so, through research, we've seen that art, art does that. And so we brought this competition to Lake City. I mean, we prepped for it. Um, a lot of hard work, of course, but um, it's been working. Over five years, it has grown tremendously. So we are, we've designed a mural, and then over the course of the next week, we're gonna be painting it in, and people can come join us and help us paint it. <laughs> well, this festival has all different kinds of art, and then our art is a little more participatory. So it's, it's kind of fun to see how art can change an environment and bring people together and just, you know, have fun creating something, working together to do something. Well, Art Fields Junior kind of was inspired off Art Fields. We recognize the importance of arts in children's lives. There's research out there that proves that children involved in, in the arts do well. Um, so we started doing year-round activities, and one thing we focused on was the Art Fields Junior Art Competition. We were hoping to have at least 300 students to apply, and we had over 500, and so we're ecstatic. We have three venues this year. We have primary, elementary, middle, and secondary on exhibit this year. <laughs> it's different. It's different in the sense where we use our community. Uh, our volunteers are key. We have over 300 volunteers that register each year. They provide support um, from day one. And it's just, a, it's just a very loving event. I make sculptures of twigs and leaves and branches. And, uh, and then recently I started to play around with the idea of, of rocks. So, yeah, I developed a process for making these rocks and started uh, making more or less a collage with the vegetation, the sculptures of vegetation. I think it's pretty exciting, it has to be, especially for a small town like this. It's a very uh, you know, surprising enterprise, very impressive, I gotta say. And we have artists from all the southeast, but, you know, a lot of high quality art and it seems to be building every year. Really, I'm blown away. I started with this organization before Art Fields even had a name. It was just a dream and a passion of local community members to make a difference in their community. I want to see it continue to grow and touch people's lives because art is like um, so empowering. You know, it's people sharing themselves with Lake City through their arts. And art creates conversation, whether that may be good, whether that may be bad, it creates conversation. And that creates growth. And so I'm hoping with Art Fields, we continue to grow together, conversate together, meet new people, and make a difference and continue to grow. <laughs> In tonight's final segment, we'll revisit the Governor's School for the Arts and Humanities. It's there the state continues to nurture young artists through unique programs that foster and develop creative expression for students from all across the state. There's just something, I think, really incredible about being able to convey something without words. 
uh, I think that when it's done, it's really, really effective and really powerful. I'd love to be a part of the team of artists in the world that are pushing for change and using the arts in that way. The Governor's School for the Arts and Humanities is a public residential high school serving students in grades 11 and 12 primarily in five art areas. Uh, we serve students in music, creative writing, dance, drama, and visual art. Our students come from all 46 counties of the state and we're very proud of having graduates uh, from our residential school as well as in our summer programs from throughout the state of South Carolina. All of our students audition for our artistic programs and they're selected uh, based upon the quality of that audition and for the students in the residential program they spend uh, their junior and senior years on campus with us and graduate with a high school diploma from the state of South Carolina as well as an artist diploma. Our students are passionate about the arts which is why they have come to us because they want to complete their high school education with us. So they are a student who is excited, engaged, and that carries forward throughout the, the work that they do, whether that's in their academics or outside of class in student life. And so they are kids who want to immerse themselves in the arts, and we are always happy to see them grow and develop as young artists. Academics here, however, allow our students to rise above. We have small class sizes, we have individualized attention from our faculty, and we are ready to support students wherever they come to us regarding their academics. A lot of people I meet are surprised to remember that we're a public school, so we students do graduate with a South Carolina high school diploma. We're that kind of academic program, I think, that is geared toward working with these talented young people. Um, so we do the kind of traditional subjects, but in maybe untraditional ways, unconventional ways. Just the fact that we have these kids in our classroom means that it's going to be kind of unconventional. They are unique. Um, and that's both, you know, great and a challenge, but I have attended a lot of their uh, events in the arts um, and seeing them, you know, a student who may struggle a little bit in statistics, get up and just sing very beautifully, you know, in another language and just be so very confident in that or the artwork um, that some of the visual artists do. Um, that's, that really is unique. And so you do get to see both sides of those students. And we have to try to find ways to address that, you know, through the academics. Um, what, it, like for instance, the drama students love to read the word problems in class. That is almost like an audition for them. So um, it is a unique experience here with them. It's pretty incredible where people will go from here. Um, so this is a time where they, they try it all um, and then they start honing in. So by the last semester, it's almost like a, a master's program where they are doing a concentration, uh, where they're working with, directly with an artist mentor, and they get to do a big project by the end. Um, that's professional quality. The governor's school is magical, and the way that you feel when you first walk in is sort of unparalleled, because the architecture of the school and all the pretty foliage, and then all the students hanging out, and just loving their art and loving their fellow students. It feels magical and it makes you want to stay forever. When I set foot on campus, I knew this was the place to thrive in my art. I knew I'd be surrounded by other kids who would have the same interests as me. And not only the students around me, but the teachers, the faculty, and the residential life. It's all a community of support, knowing that this is my end goal, is to become a professional dancer. For our parents, I know that this requires a lot of thought. I say that as a parent. And so they carefully consider whether this is the right fit for their student. And then we work with them to, again, be part of this community. We want parents to view this as a partnership with us, working directly with the school, helping them help their student to grow and develop into the great artists that we see come out of the governor's school. I remember she went into the audition and I was told the audition was 15 minutes. And she was in there for about 45 minutes. 
And I'm thinking to myself, what's going on? Because she was in there and nobody came out. Finally, the um, Mr. Murray, it was, he was the head of the, I don't know if he's still the head of the drama department, but he came out and he said to me, we'll see you next year. It was difficult, you know, at the beginning because she had been home and she, she had a child that was always around me. But um, she made a lot of friends, you know, but uh, one of the things that um, she, she spoke about was some of the friendships that she made, they've been lifelong. I think that we have a very successful alumni base. We are excited that many of our alumni return home to South Carolina, and we are thrilled to see that growth and that connection with the state. There's a lot, a lot of talent who's coming out of South Carolina, so it's uh, an artistic base. The problem was there just, there wasn't any outlets there for us growing up, you know, um, which hence I came to Greenville and found, found my artistic haven here in the governor's school. When I came to campus, it was my first time realizing that like, oh, people live and go to school in a completely different way. I've never seen a campus or seen kids, you know, running around doing this, that, and the third. I'm southern, country boy come from Pendleton, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I never been around artists in this capacity, you know, I never hung out with dancers. I never listened to someone practice, you know, Beethoven or Bach Symphony 12. I've never been around that community of people. But I, what, what I knew from that strangeness was that it's where I needed to be in a very weird way. Um, because in school I expressed myself as an, I'm an artist, so I expressed myself in a very dramatic, intense, outward way. Um, and some school systems don't, you know, they don't know how to cater towards that. They don't know how to teach kids that are in that kind of capacity. But when you come here and you, you find out that like, oh, there are teachers here who understand that the arts and liberal arts or science and, you know, math, marine, all that, they go hand in hand. Um, so after a while, once you get your feet sunk into you, like, oh, this is, it's a special place. It's just a special place. Your objective. For more stories about our state and, of course, more details on those stories you've just seen, do visit our website at palmettoscene.org. And, of course, don't forget to follow us on social media, whether Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. It's at SCETV, hashtag Palmetto Scene. For all of us here at Palmetto Scene, I'm Beryl Dakers. Good night, stay strong, and thanks for watching.